And here we are. Yes, I think it's all working. Um, I've just come from a live seminar and I've just quickly changed the studio around and set this up for this. So hopefully it's all working fine. If you can hear me and see me okay and you're watching this uh, on YouTube or Twitch, then please let me know if everything is working fine. I think it is. I hope it is. Um, but yes, so today is, uh, what are we on? Game three. This is game three of Under Falling Skies for Virtually Expo. Uh, Virtually Expo, UK Games Expo's virtual event that they're running uh, because obviously we can't meet up for real. So we're doing a virtual convention instead. I'm doing demos for CGE all weekend. And yeah, right now we're about to start game three of Under Falling Skies. I did two yesterday, one more today. Uh, and today we're going to be saving New York. So it's Ray and Sebastian today. And I'm going to switch over to Discord, undefin the channel and say hello to Ray and Sebastian. Good afternoon. This is Ray. Hi, Ray. Hi everyone, this is Sebastian. Sebastian's here as well. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for signing up. Now, do both of you know anything about this game when you signed up for it? Not a thing. Excellent. <laughs> I, I know nothing. I was told to not look. I just know the Fantastic. Title. Yes, I know you you said, oh, do I need to read the rules or anything? I'm like, no, 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 don't need to do anything. I will, I will teach you how to play. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for joining me today. And yeah, we're going to save New York. So... Neither of you know anything about the game, so let, let's tell you about it. This is a prototype copy of Under Falling Skies. This is going to be released later on this year from Czech Games Edition. It will be coming out somewhere near the end of the year, probably October, November time. Technically, it is a solo game. However, it is a game which you can play with multiple people working together as a team. There are no official multiplayer rules for the game. So basically, yeah, you are working together as if it was a solo game. Thematically, it's very simple. Aliens have arrived and are trying to dis... There's a lot of noise. I'm not sure what that is. Um, yeah, it's somebody's phone. If you're able to mute yourself on Discord just while there's background noise, that would be great. There we go. Okay, so thematically what's happened is aliens have arrived. Uh, there's an alien mothership here and they're basically trying to destroy the world. Um, the game is going to come with over 20 different cities, each of which has different base configurations different layouts, different special abilities, etc, etc. Off camera, before we started, Ray and Sebastian have chosen that they're going to try and defend New York today. And this alien mothership at the end of each round is going to move one space closer to the city of New York. If it reaches this space here, where you see this big pink skull, uh, then you're going to lose the game immediately. So you are on a timer with regards to the number of rounds in the game. The way that you win the game is by doing research, which is going to be moving this marker here, Remember, this is a prototype all the way to the top of the research track. If you do that, that represents that you've developed the weapon capable of defeating the aliens and driving them away. So, yeah, that's how you win by getting this marker up. You lose if the mothership reaches here, but also the base has a certain number of hit points and the mothership is going to be launching these alien uh, spacecraft. These are going to be moving down the board a little bit like Space Invaders. And when they move onto this tile here, the base is going to take one point of damage and if the base ever takes its sixth point of damage so five damage and we're okay but the sixth point of damage and you will lose the game immediately so two ways to lose one way to win the way we're going to be doing this demo today is we're going to be basically jumping in and start explaining the rules as we go and then by the time we're a couple of rounds in you should be you should be okay so here's what happens the game is divided into a series of rounds each round has three phases Phase one is where we roll these dice. So there are three black dice and two white dice. We give these a roll. There we go. And what you now do is you must assign those dice into your base. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's just make sure we're okay. I just got a ping. Uh, where are we? Yeah, I think we're okay. Uh, so if you look at your base, your base is divided into five columns and multiple levels. Okay, so for the purpose of this demo, because obviously uh, you're going to be giving me instructions, Ray and Sebastian, and I'm going to be doing things on here. If you can refer to these as column one, two, three, four, and then five and level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, level six. So the rules about placing the dice, there's a few rules. The first rule is you've got five dice, you've got five columns, you must place one dice in each column. You are not allowed to have two dice in the same column and you must place all of your dice. The next rule is that whenever you place one of the white dice, 
you must immediately re-roll all of the dice that you have left. So you need to be used this cleverly and tactically. If you really wanted this five, for example, you would want to put the five out before you then put the six out, because when you put the six out, you're going to have to re-roll everything that you want to do. So bear that in mind. Now, high values are generally better because they will get you to do more things. But every time you put a dice in a column, all of the alien spacecraft, so not the mothership, but these red spacecraft here, if there was, at the start of the game, there's only one in each column, but later in the game, there might be more. So because we've put a dice of value five here, all of the spacecraft in that column move down that number of spaces. One, two, three, four, five. OK, so the higher dice allow you to do more things with the room, but it means the aliens move closer towards you. Now, there's various symbols all over this board here. We're playing on difficulty level one today, which means none of these boards have been flipped over to their more difficult side. Um, and if when moving, if one of these spacecraft lands on one of these icons, something happens. OK, some of the things are good. Some of the things are bad. We'll explain that more when we go on. So placing the dice will cause the spacecraft to move down. Now, the other thing that's really important is this is an excavator. OK, and at the start of the game, you have only excavated these first two levels. So there is a there is a sort of snaking path through your base. And at the start of the game, none of this is actually yours. You are only allowed to use the rooms up to, but not including the excavator. So only these rooms at the start of the game. However, once per turn, you may place one of your dice ahead of the excavator. For example, you could put the six, four, five, six. So you do count these blank spaces. So you could put the six there. Now I've put it there. That's the furthest it could go. You could actually put it there, 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 or there, wherever you want to. But what you're doing by placing one dice ahead of the excavator is you're not actually using the room. What you're saying is that we are going to excavate to that point. Now you place the dice first and then once all of the dice are placed, we will resolve them in whatever order you choose. So what happens with the excavator is you will spend one power. This is the power track here uh, and that will excavate all the way to there. That means on the next round, you now have more rooms that you can use. So speaking of power, you have a power strike here on this particular base layout, because this is this is set for New York. You can have a maximum of eight power and you only have one to start with. How do you get more power? That is the yellow rooms. So there are a few yellow rooms on the board. Uh, this is the only one you've got access to at the start of the game, and it's actually a double room. Now, the rules for double rooms are that if you only end up with one dice in a double room, it doesn't do anything at all. You have to have dice on both spaces for it to work. So you are allowed to place a dice on a space, but it won't do anything when we come to resolve it unless there's another die in there as well. And very simply, you add together the values on the dice and that tells you how much power you get. So in this case, you would get seven power moving you from one up to eight, which is the maximum. So that's what the power is. Uh, that's how you get power. Power is used to excavate. Excavating always costs one power, no matter how far you go. But power is also useful for these other two rooms. So this first room here, this is where you can scramble fighter jets. This is a really expensive room to use. It costs three power. But what it does is when you come to resolve this room, it blows up all of the alien spacecraft, which are on an explosion space with a number which is equal to or lower than the value of the dice that you put on there. So if you went on here with a five, and then you chose to spend the three power because you can put the dice on there, that doesn't cost any power, but then using the dice does, you will blow up all fighters if they are on a space that's numbered one to five. If it was on a space numbered six, like there or there, it would not blow them up. Now, blowing up fighters isn't as good as you think because there's an infinite supply of these red fighters. So every time one gets blown up, it just goes back to the mothership, it will respawn at the end of the round. But that's how you blow stuff up and stop it getting to your base. The next room to explain is the blue room. The, the blue room is where you build robots. And what happens, I don't know if you can see, but there is a minus one on here. Now, what that means is if we were to go in there with a five, the spacecraft still moves five spaces towards you because that's the value on the dice. But when we come to resolve the dice, it's treated as if it's one pip fewer. So it's actually treated as if it was a four. And the blue rooms allow you to build robots. Now, normally on other cities, you are allowed to build a maximum of two robots. 
The special rule for New York is you're only ever allowed to build one robot. So I'm going to take this, remove it from the game. But your robot is a super robot. It is treated as if it was one pip higher. So here's how robots work. If you were to build a robot, this is a five minus a one, so that's a four. That will generate you a four strength robot, which you must immediately place in an available room. So let's say you decide to put it here. That robot is going to work for you every round of the game if you want it to. And every time you use it, it will tick down by one. Now, by putting the robot here, which you're allowed to do, it's not going to do anything unless you put another dice next to it. But now you've effectively got an extra dice per turn that's constantly working for you. Two special rules for the robots is they don't move the fighters. Uh, they don't move the alien spacecraft down towards you. And they also do not count as a dice in that column. So you've still got five dice that you must place and you must still place one of your black or white dice per column. The robots don't count for that. And the, remember, the special rule of New York is although it's a four, it's treated as if it's a five. Now, the one very important part of the game we haven't explained yet is how you do research to move this marker up the track. And I'm not actually going to explain that yet because that is only possible in the green rooms and you don't have those available yet. So although there are different ways you can play this game, you're going to have to excavate some because you're going to have to excavate these green rooms in order to be able to do the research. The final bit to explain is level one. So this level one, this is these gray rooms at the top and these are special because what they do is whilst they don't have any special ability themselves, whenever you put a dice on them, the, the alien spacecraft moved down one space fewer. So by putting a five on there, it means this would actually only move four. And if you were to go on there with a one, if that was a one, it means you've frozen, you've stopped it moving for that turn because one minus one is, is zero. Uh, I think that's probably enough to be going on with. Have either of you got any questions before we jump in to start playing? Uh, how many rounds more or less this place? How Let's have a look. Up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, oh. twelve at most, because there are ways that this mothership can move closer towards you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, uh, we've rolled the dice, so let, let's go with that as the roll. Um, so, yeah, it's up to you two together to discuss between yourselves where you want to put the dice, and then once you've made a decision, let me know. We can always undo things. So if you were to say, we'll put the black dice on the power room in column three, and then I'll move this down five. And then you decide, oh, we're going to put the two there. One, two. You can then say, oh, no, I'll tell you what, Paul. No, 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 let's change your mind on that. You can just undo it. OK, so if you want me to just move things around to see where they go, we can do that. Once the white dice has been placed, though, when we've done the re-roll, we can't undo beyond that point because that would be cheating. That's not allowed. Jay plays in the chat. First, first time coaching one live. Thank you very much for joining in. Right. OK, over to you two then. I'll get a drink while you discuss. All right, wait. It feels like Paul knows what he's doing. Yeah, but I'm not playing. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I think we should start by picking the black five and placing it somewhere so we don't re-roll it in a minute. Uh, where do you think that should go? I think we've lost Ray on the chat. Oh, no, I'm here. Oh, he's here. Right, okay. He's here. I muted myself earlier and I almost forgot to unmute right. myself. Okay, so... Uh... I'm thinking the five should be in one of the power rooms because we're going to need power. Um, I'm good with that. Let's let's put five in one of the power rooms. So if you were to put it in column four, they would move this fighter here onto an explosion space. Now, remember, the explosion space doesn't mean it's blown up. It, mm -hmm. it just means that you now have the opportunity to blow it up if you then put another dice on a fighter room. We get the power immediately following filling the other power room, right? Uh, not immediately, but 
you will get you place all your dice first and then you resolve all of your dice so yes you, okay. you'll be able to spend it that's enough power to use the red room yeah yeah you can resolve the rooms in any order you want to uh do we want to rush excavating a little bit yes i suppose so so let, let's maybe pick the white six. Okay, so the furthest away okay. you can put it is there, which is quite a lot of excavation, which is good. So what that's going to do, if you do that, is that's going to move that one, two, three, four, five, six. You happy with that? Do you want to see what, what the events actually do and just move it by five? I'm curious. Uh, on this turn, I would probably not. I would recommend tactically not triggering a mothership movement this turn, but you may want to do it next turn. And that, that'll make sense once I've explained this at the end of the round. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Happy I with thought that? I'd like mothership to stick exactly where it is. Yeah. Okay, so if you're happy with that, we're going to lock that six in and we're going to re roll these dice. You don't want to use any of these before we re roll? don't do much okay well, we, we could put one of them in the power room we're not going to get more than seven anyway and that's going to move the spaceship by two All right. that's, a, that's a very good point because your your power maxes out at eight mm -hmm. so mm. now the question is do we want a white one or a black one well if you place the white one it would then re-roll well, we the six re the others. yeah okay, so, so it's, it's yeah uh, let's do it then. Okay, so you put the black one in there. So before we've placed that one, we're going to place that one. That moves this down too. So it's landed on a blue arrow, which means it moves to the right. So it's, yeah. it's good that you did this one first, because otherwise both of them would have moved down. Okay, so do you want to place the black two, or you want to go with a reroll and see what you get? I personally don't see any good for the black two at all. Okay. So we place the six there, and these get re-rolled. Okay, we have another six and a four. Now that's interesting. That's opened up some options. It has indeed. Uh, losing the white six means we lose the other white six. Nope, it would only re-roll the dice that are left. These ah. these are now these are now locked. You're good with these. Now we have lots of options. Mm-hmm. Oh. Now what are the green ones again? These green ones to... Yeah, so you can't use these this turn because you haven't excavated them yet, so I'll explain them next round. Uh, Paul, could you tell us what number we have under the uh, spaceship that we can shoot? This is a number four. Number four. So we have yeah. we need four or higher. Yeah. To, to um, yeah. So I don't know if these will work. And what you want to do with this room, especially because it costs three power, is you want to be efficient and try and blow up as many as you can at a time, because it it will destroy not just ones in that column, but every All spacecraft right. which is on a, a number space. If the number it matches, yeah. That is, if I, if I, if I understand correctly, it doesn't really destroy them. It just moves them back up to yep. the mothership. Yeah, and they'll they'll respawn. Now, uh, if two that are in the same column, I assume that doesn't matter. They'll just one of them will go to the same column, and the other will go to an open space. Um. So it, once you've got two spacecraft in that column, on the next round, whenever you put a dice in that column, it will move both of the spacecraft down towards you. I mean, if we if we blow everything up right now, uh -huh. we'll just have five across the board. Not you won't. Uh, nothing will happen to the one that's correct. Yes, in the uh, same column. Yeah. We could move column one by four, and then we end up uh, with a six that can shoot it down. 
So you've already got a dice in column one. So you can't ah, place another right. one. So we are locked there. Yeah. So all we can do is to put one in the red room and the other one is wasted, right? Yeah, well, the other one would go on level one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just which one do you want to put where? It's a shame that that's not a five, because if that was a five, that would be brilliant. So we could just make a very... All right, we can't use the blue room at all. Uh, no, because you've put a dice in column one. Escalated too far. All right. Which do we put in the red room? One, two, three, four, five. If we put the... Oh, no, never mind. So if there is we... a way that you can... Um... Oh, no, you can't. Yeah, that's a shame. I just I thought think... you... You could put the four in column five and that would get this fighter onto an explosion space, but you can't. The only place you can put the four in column five is there mm -hmm. when it, it would only then move three. Oh. <laughs> so I think we should put a four in the red room to move so the spaceship. Four goes speed. in the fighter room. That goes one, two, three, four, which means the six is going to have to go there. Mm-hmm. And that move this one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you okay with that? Yeah, I suppose it doesn't make any difference. Really? Okay. So we're going to lock this in, and now we come to resolving the rooms in any order you want to. So we normally just remove the dice from level one first because they don't do anything. But which order would you like to resolve these in? Uh, I don't think it changes much. If we do power, we get seven power, right? That's we true. Max it out. Yeah, there you go. We can do this first. We can excavate second, which costs one. One power to excavate all the way to there. Yeah. And then we do the fighter, which takes down one guy. Yeah, so this, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but just so you know rules-wise, this is optional. You do not have to use it now. So placing the dice in there and then using them is a separate thing. So you may decide, oh, actually, is it worth spending three power just to blow up one fighter? It's up to you. No, I don't see it. Uh, I agree. Let's I load agree. them up next round. Okay, that's right. Much right where they are. Right, so that's phase two done. Phase three is the mothership moves down one space. And then the bit that I hadn't mentioned are these icons on the right-hand side. So every time the mothership moves down at the end of a round, what's going to happen is this ability here is going to trigger and what that means is you're going to get one of these white ships now this white ship will appear in column three because column three is currently empty and the difference between the white ships and the red ships is is when you blow up one of the white ships it is removed from the game okay now i said when the mothership moves down at the end of the round it triggers this ability if you were to move the mothership down manually, which is what happens when a spacecraft lands on one of these spaces, it moves down, but it does not trigger the icon to the right hand side. And this next one here is that your excavator, there's, there's like a cave in and your excavator moves back two spaces. So if you didn't like the look of that, what you could do this round is manually move the spaceship down one by you know, engineering it so that these fighters end on one of these spaces, and then it would skip this and it would go onto that one. The downside is you've brought it closer towards you. Right, let's move to round two and let's roll some dice. I mean, you did a lot of excavating, which was very good. Okay, so they are the dice. We've got a two, two threes, a four and a five. And now it's time to explain how the research in the game works. So the green rooms are research rooms. You currently have two of them available. This one costs one power. This one costs two power, but any dice you put in here is treated as if it's one point higher. Each room is resolved separately. So even though they're both green rooms, you do not add the values of the dice together. You have to resolve one room completely first and then the other one. But like normal, you can resolve them in whatever order you want to. When you resolve one of the research rooms, you simply gain research points equal to the value of the die. So it would be four if you put it there, or it would be five if you put it there. And then you must immediately spend those research points 
by moving your marker up on the research track. And if you notice that there are numbers in these green circles, that's how many research points it costs you to move up on the track. So for example, four would move you just to the three, but then you wouldn't have enough to get there. And the excess points are lost. They do not carry over from one room to the next. But if your marker was already here, so let's say you put a four there. Oh, let's say you put a three and a four. Let's say you put a two and a three, four like that, okay? The two in this room is treated as if it was a three. That would move you to there. And then you could spend the four, which would move you to the three and then the one, okay? So by looking at the numbers here and spending the research points, you can move up in the most efficient way. There is a little bit of a fence here because it costs you six points to get through that. And the very last number is in 11. Now on this particular board, there is only one way that you are able to generate 11 research points in one go. And that is here, okay? Because all of these are only single rooms. So there's no way you can generate 11 in one room. You're gonna have to use this room down here. So you are gonna have to do a lot more excavating. Right then, so the dice have been rolled. Um, it's round two, over to you two. Unfortunately, our high numbers, uh, not quite, but uh, our higher numbers are white. Yeah. Uh, now the two doesn't seem to be very useful. So if we're not going to re-roll it, which of course we can, and we want to put it in the second column, which would give us the blow up the ships and the white one. I forget what that is. Do, do we want to line up all the spaceships so we can blow them up? I think that will take a little bit thinking through. We can mm -hmm. put, we need one or four in column one. We need a three in the second one. Uh, two in the third one, fourth one is kind of problematic, and then two or a six in the last one. What I'm thinking is the two can be very useful by putting it in the explosion uh, space, the red space that we have access to, which will move the ship down to the uh, the symbol that will move the mothership down, mm -hmm. which is right. So I think that makes it more valuable as it is than re-rolled. However, if we had a six in the first column, that would also move the spaceship. It would. It would. It would get us dangerously close to, to mm -hmm. the base, but I think that's fine. We only have one place in the six in the first column to put a put a die, and we don't have a six anyway. Mm -hmm. However, that would also make a very nice robot with would. Uh, automation. Okay, so we're part, we're going to want to use the white dice anyway. We'll keep that in mind for a reroll. So if you want to maximize your chances of getting a six, you want to place one of the white dice first and then re-roll everything else. So what do you think, Ray? Do we want to risk it? rather put the black two in place first and then put a white die somewhere. Possibly okay. in Let's, let's, place, let's place uh, black two. Mm -hmm. Not sure we should put it in the fighter room. Uh, the one below it, that is a robot as well, right? Yeah. But Remember, you, just... you put it in the room. You don't have to then use it. So. But uh, in the fighter square, I think, is the best place for it. Well, that's not going to shoot anyone. That's, that's the no, problem. but it, it doesn't actually matter because you're only allowed to put one dice in this column. Exactly. And if you're not going to use it, then yeah, it doesn't actually matter where you put it. So, oh, what was that? Let's put it there. Um, okay. Anyway. So this moves down two. 
which means the mothership moves down one. Now, there's a sneaky trick that you've just learned about this game. And this hasn't. This is the first time this weekend that this sneaky trick has been done. What you've done is you have moved the mothership down one space and there is a alien spacecraft here just below the mothership. So what happens in that case is the mothership moves down one, it collects this and it actually goes here. So you've actually removed it for this turn. It will respawn at the end of the turn, but it's actually not going to move itself this turn. So it is a little trick that you can do with this game if you time things correctly. And it's going to respawn in the middle, right? Uh, right now, uh, it would respawn in either column one or column two because it, it spawns, first of all, in an empty column, but there's no empty columns. So it would respawn in the column where the spacecraft were the furthest away from the mothership. Okay, great. Which means we can manipulate the spaceships mm -hmm. uh, where that one pops up. Yeah. But it's not going to come back until the end of the round. So don't need to worry about it just yet. Okay, so we no longer need to worry about... Well, we don't want to move the spaceship again, I, I suppose. Mm, how about we put a five in the robot room so we get ourselves nice robots? I think, well, that is a good ploy. I'm not saying no. I think we should put it put the five somewhere else, hoping to re-roll the three into a six. And get an even better one. Mm -hmm. That would mean the mothership, if you moved, if you did a six in column one, that will move the mothership again. Which, you know, right. it might, might be might what you want to do. If we got a six, I would rather put it in the research room and just move us up by two notches. Mm -hmm. uh, or even three. We'll so, all right. Well, if we're going, if we're going with that strategy, then yes, we put the the white five in the blue room. Okay. Right. So that goes on there. This moves down five. One, two, three, four, five onto an empty space, and then let's re-roll what we've got left. We have a five, a four, and a three. Right, so that idea goes out of the window. Yep. <laughs> well, you've still got another white dice. You could re-roll again. We could re-roll. Uh, that's probably not going to work. And actually, the black dice we have are quite nice. Uh, you get nine power, but you can only use one. Right. So I think what we... So we have just columns three to five left. Uh, column three, four and five, yes. And you do have so two research so rooms available. Right. So looking at our rooms, we're going to be using research anyway. And the way it looks now, we would just move by three and a three. We don't actually need four and five. Remember, you can... Yeah, so if you were to use the five on here, there is a plus one on here. Oh. What that means is that would generate six points of research and it would actually move you to here. Let's uh, let's do that then. Uh, what do you think, Ray? Yes, and if we put a four in the green one next to it... You would then move up another two spaces. This is great. Let's okay. uh, let one, me two, on this three, way. Four. So that's on a blue arrow which means it's going to move to here. So before you do that, you might want to put a dice in column five. Well, but that will force us to re-roll. But that would force you to re-roll, so yeah. I think we are fine. Uh, this will move one to the right. Mm -hmm. And well, this will actually move the spaceship down by one. And no reason to use the fighter space. Well, we can't use it. You've not excavated this turn. Right, yeah. Right. We well, have to, have to, 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 to go in the white row. Yeah, so you've not actually excavated this turn. Here's an option. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you the option. One, two, three, four. Instead of putting the four in the research room, you could put the four there and excavate. 
I thought that wasn't an active jet. Uh, no, you're using it to excavate because it's it's one, two, three, four away from the excavator. Oh, okay. I I think that's actually quite good. Okay. That's really crazy, and put the white three in the other red space next to it. Uh, you can't. You can only excavate once. Ah. So the three would go either in the research room, which would still get you. Uh, it would get you one point of research, or you could put it in the top, depending on where you wanted this ship to move. What happens if the class, like this one, would move? Uh, it, it doesn't. It would just go one, two, and then it would stay there. One is better than nothing. Yep. So do you want it in the research room or in the top room? I think we should do research. Okay. I'm so this moves research. one, two, three. And okay, we're going to do. So we lock in and let's spend some power. Which room right. would you like to activate first? Uh, shall we go with the research rooms first? Yeah, let's do that first. Okay. So the order in this case doesn't actually matter, I don't think. No, it doesn't. No. So you spend one power for three points of research, uh, and then two power for six points of research. It just moves out to there. Okay. Uh, you then have one power to excavate, which I assume you're going to do. And right. then are you going to build a nice robot? Oh, I think we should. I think okay. that's great. So not this one, but you're going to spend one power. So it builds a four point robot. So where is that robot going to go? You can put it uh, in any empty room. That's a great question. We could either do research every round or we could do power every round. What do you think, Ray? power i think okay now which power room would you like to put it in because you actually now have another power room here or you could put it in one of those two i think the small one is great but because there is nothing else in this column yep up to the moment yeah seems good okay so we do the mothership yeah. so the mothership moves down one another white fighter appears and now we respawn so all of the columns are full which means this red one goes in column one because there's the furthest distance. Uh, and this one goes in column five. Okay, round four. Off we go. Oh, low numbers. So right. one, a one, a two, a four, and a five. Now we need to do some shooting. Yeah, let's see. So just, just to remind you, this robot is a super robot. So although it's value four, it's because of New York, it's treated as if it was a five. There is a reason mm -hmm. though we're not turning it to a five um, is because it ticks down every time you use it. So when it's on a one, it counts as a two, but then it will be removed from the board. But it is on a power space that generates minus one power. So in fact, what it's gonna do is it's gonna generate you four power this turn. So yeah, just to, get, just to give you an update on your power situation. Right, so I have five power at the end of the round. Uh, you're on two at the moment, so oh, that will yep, that will generate you another four. So you'll you'll have six to use this round. Um, I see two ships that can be moved onto a exploder space with one move, and a third ship that can be moved with two moves two moves and look at that we have two ones and two mm -hmm. and we should use them i think that's that's a good idea so should we start with a two or on column one somewhere oh camp yeah the two in column one somewhere right mm. Mm. we have a fight edge for free there right but that's a minus one correct yes not going to shut down anything useful no no i don't think we can actually do anything useful in this column this round. no so you, you can just put it in the corridor 
And that would that would move that down too, but it would also move this down too. Yes, which will move down the mothership. Which moves down the mothership. And okay. takes the white spaceship with it? Uh, no, the, the white spaceship was currently on the mothership. I see, so it just keeps so, moving. Yeah. Uh, we should have moved it by one and just uh, taken off. Yeah, if you want to do that, we can we can undo that. Yeah, uh, do right. we have... No, we need to move this one by two anyway, right? Yeah. Let's, let's just carry on. Uh, the other one that could be uh, we would want to move to is in the same uh, column as the robot, so we can't use it. No, remember, this dice does not take... You still have to place a dice in this column. Oh, but there's no place to put it. Uh, and on, on an empty space. Yeah, you could put it on an empty space, or you could excavate just to here if you really needed to. That would move by one. I think we need to move by two this time. Right. Uh, let's uh, let's figure out how to move something else. Uh, what about the white one? White one in the column three. We could move it either on a six or a four, right? Uh, yeah. So this so one space ahead is a value six explosion space, and two spaces ahead is the value four explosion space. <laughs> because of the four, right? I think we should move it by one. Maybe we should move it by one and just reroll. Mm-hmm. Because then you might get a six for the for the fighters. So we'll try to get a six for the fighters. I don't see a way we could move it by two at the moment. Okay. You happy with that, Ray? Yeah. So we're going to put the one into column three. And whereabouts in column three do you want to put it? Do we need more power this round? And we should just do some research instead. Yes. Um, no, it's, it's only a one though. But I think we should put the black five in a power space. But let's talk about the one right now. Well, the robot's going to be generating four power for you this turn. That'll give you six power in total. So we don't have to worry about power. No, not, not for this turn. Right, so do we want to spend two power for two research? Oh, two research is not going to help us. Actually, one research is not going to help us either. That's not no. great. Oh. So yeah, maybe just put it in the power room. Let's just put it in the power room. Maybe we'll mm -hmm. end up doing something okay. more useful. So this moves down to the explosion space. And we're going to re-roll these. And we need a six. Come on, dice. Almost. Excellent. <laughs> All right. <sighs> well, there's still a chance. Could try again. We have two, uh, we have one ship that can be moved into an explosion space. Those days. Mm hmm. A five would put that one on there. I think that's a great move. We should do it. We also have a two for column two. I'm sorry, uh, one for column two. Yes, yeah, but we need that to shoot, actually. Column two is going to be your shooting them down space, I think. Which at the moment needs to be at least a. Well, if you're going to put that on there, it needs to be a four. Right. So. I mean, we could we could give up on the spaceship on number six. That, you know, it's it's not too close. We could just live with that. We could put a black five on column five, move the guy to a four, and just have a guaranteed, uh, nice. A shot at column one and two guys yeah. from fighter jets. What do you think? Uh, that sounds good. So we move yeah. this one. 
one, two, three, four, five. That's on an explosion space. This one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And, uh, and then the white goes to column two. Okay. Level. So one, two, three, four, five. Now that's the mothership space. So the mothership moves down one and collects that. And then we're going to re-roll the one. And hopefully you get a four. Four would be great. Or something good. Uh, that's a three. We get a three. Uh, we can put it on the... Um, we could put it on the research space. You can do some research. Or you could do some excavating. Yeah. Wanted a four. Hmm. It has to go there. So it's re the only question really is power, research, or fighter. And fighter we've already got covered. Yeah, it can't be here because the excavator is... Well, you could put it here, but it wouldn't do anything. So I think your options are excavate to here, or get a bit of research, or generate some more power. I think we should go with research. We are, we oh, research would work. Research would work perfectly. It's yep. a three. Because you need a three. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do that. Should we go with that? Okay, uh, there is a question in the chat about when the game will be released in Poland. Uh, I'm not particular. I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I know Rebel will do the publish uh, the publishing the version in Poland, but I don't know the exact date that will be out. Okay, right. Let's resolve some dice then. So, which one do you want to do first? Well, we can remove that one because it doesn't do anything. We can remove that one because it doesn't do anything. And we can remove that one because it doesn't do anything. We need to have more power to the mm -hmm. rest of them. So the robot counts as a five, but it's in a minus one room. So four power, putting you on six, and the robot ticks down. And what we do is we're going to just tilt it 45 degrees, just so we remember that we've actually used it this turn. And the other two, the order doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. so what, one power to do some research, moving you up the next spot, and then three power, one, two, three, blowing up that one and that one. There we go. Not too bad. Okay, right, so... Uh, time ticks on, mothership moves down one, there is a cave in, and the excavator moves backwards one space, and then we respawn. So column one is empty, uh, then it would go in column two, then it would go into column five. Okay, next round. Here we go. Right, one, five, five, five. All the fives, I can't roll sixes today at all. Uh, yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. Should we start by excavating a little bit? I'm worried we are not getting uh, fast enough at that. I think we'll use one of our fives to excavate. Okay, so the furthest away you can put it is one, two, three, four, five. If you're happy with that. That sounds very good. Okay, it does move this. One, two, three, four, five, and this, one, two, three, four, five, which is another mothership space. Uh, you sure? I don't know. <laughs> so your other options, instead of doing that, one, two, three, four, you can still use a five to excavate, but you could just excavate four. Oh no, yeah, so you could just excavate four spaces ahead, still use a five, but it would move this one down five instead of those two. I think we we have to do it this way. What do you think? Yeah, I don't see a better place to put the excavator. Okay. So one, two, Wait. three, four, five. Now, if we moved column two by just one, we can shoot two of them at once. We can. I, I think that would be a good thing to figure out. Mm -hmm. We have a one. Uh, I think we should place all the fives before we, we place it somewhere. So you're talking about using a five in this fighter room here? Uh, that is a minus one. It if is. you could just read out for me the column two uh, explosion spaces. We have a three and the other is? 
Uh, say again. So by put, if if you did put the five on there, one, two, three, four, five, that would go to there. Apparently, yes. there's a. I just got a message from the Twitch chat to say why didn't the one generate power last round? So these double rooms they only work if if there is dice in both spaces. If there's only dice in one space, it does not it does not work. Okay, sorry, Sebastian. What was the what was the the thing? I, I was trying to read the explosion spaces while you were talking. I just checked it on. Uh, oh right, okay. Uh, so now I know we have two threes. If we move the column two by one, we get to mm -hmm. shoot both of them. Absolutely. Very nice. Yeah. So if you put the five on there, that would move this one, two, three, four, five. And then yeah, you're right. If you then spend a one somewhere, somewhere in column two later where it goes, uh, but we would move these guys by one and shoot both of them now at the end of the round. Yeah, that would go to there. Okay. Uh, Ray, do you want to do something with a five? Do you see something useful we could do? Let's see, we're getting great power from the robot. Um, you have to use both dice to get power from that other space. So I don't see power as an option here. We could put the five on a research space. That would give us two hours to move up on a on the research track. That would be good, but it moves the spaceship down. One, two, three, four. Yeah. If only we had the four in this mm. room. Well, you can put the five oh, in the top room. Somewhere and cross our fingers. That is interesting. If we put a five there, we actually get a four and we clear out this column as well. Mm -hmm. You happy with that? No, I agree with Triple L. Place the white three somewhere and hope to get it and re-roll the black five. That's another option. All right, so we could re-roll both and get something better. Uh, well, you can't re-roll this. You can only re-roll all of your, your remains. Oh, hang on, did we re-roll? Because we have placed white one and we are we, just... Ah, turned. yes. And we've not re-rolled, have we? Uh, no. We haven't. Right, so yeah, we do need to re-roll. Uh, so I, re I got distracted with other messages coming through on the Twitch chat. Right, there's a two and a six. There are six. What there we is the six. Uh, we've, I think we needed it last round. <laughs> yeah, this round is actually very unhelpful. <laughs> that, this is fine, we'll figure it out. Oh, I know what we can do with a six. We could put it in the last row, last column. And this shoots down two spaceships. Does it? If my math is right, this is five for both of them. Five. One, two, three, and we just both up. Yeah, except that is a number six explosion space. Ah, okay. And we have a five. We have four there, actually. Yeah, yeah that's a five minus one is a four. Yeah. Okay. I think that's still not terrible, but we we could do something else. A research would be great. We would mm -hmm. move. Would yeah, six, three notches. Six would actually get you three steps up on the research track. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would be interesting. Uh, I think we should do that. Deal with the consequences later. So six in there. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, and that nudges over to there. Uh, so gang it up. But we have a, ooh, we have a two. You have a two. Yeah. The uh, two could become a one. If we moved it by one, then we mm -hmm. also should not have one, right? Yeah. So that could go there, which would move that to there and that to there. Okay, you happy with that? I uh, think we don't have another choice, so... Okay, uh, right. So let's yeah. resolve them. So we can take that one off. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. And what order do you, would you want to do these in?
plus the power first. Okay, it so up. it's three plus one is four, minus one down to three. So that generates three points of power, putting you on five. And then, yeah, shall I just spend the other three? Uh, go ahead, I don't think so. It's... Yeah, so one power to excavate to here. Uh, one power to do six points of research, which is one, four, and then one. And then this is free, doesn't take any power. So it's just four points of jet fighters, which destroys that one and that one. That is great. Okay, right. So the mothership uh, moves down, collects that. Um. Now this icon is a new one that we haven't seen before, but this actually moves you back on the research track. Now, huh. the good thing is you're on a one space. So actually you've not really lost that much by, by that doing that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, respawning. So we need a new one in column two. We need a new one in column four. And then this one goes in column three. So column three actually has three fighters in it. Wow. Okay. Right. Yeah. Let's give this a roll. Okay. We're at it again with the fives. These dice must be fixed. So full house, two fours, three fives. Ow. At this point, we want to move them as little as we can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is fine. <laughs> so the first thing we do is place one of the white fours and re-roll everything. Mm -hmm. we did that. If we did that in column five, uh, we would place a uh, white gate on the four and we could shoot this down. Mm. Now, just a quick note about these robots. You can remove them at any time. So if you did want to build another robot now and you figured that this one is getting a bit old, you can actually just voluntarily remove it. I think we want to do that. Right. We need more than one power. We need more than one. He's, he's going to generate you two this turn because it's a super new, it's a super robot. And the only alternative in this row is we could research or spend two days to shoot but I think we won't need that. Let's uh, let's replace it with. Uh, what do we want to replace it for, with? Do we want to reroll now? Well, you don't replace it now. What I'm saying is, if you wanted to use to put a five on here to build another robot, ah, then when see. you when you built that robot, you you could then choose to remove that and and put a new one on somewhere else. But then we are not going to, we are still going to get just two power this round. You're going to get two power this round from this robot, yeah. So we most definitely need a new robot somewhere very soon. Or at least to clear this one out. Right, uh, should we place, what do we want in the last round? Do we still want a four there or a five? Five is very risky. Mm. In fact, if we put a five there, the white shift comes to column four and then we move it when we place something in column four and then we die. I don't think we want that. Well, we don't die. It just reaches and takes one HP, right? Mm-hmm. What if a uh, string of five in column four moves the uh, ship on the mothership to an exploder space? Mm-hmm. Which of the three... The space is a uh, six. So, oh, that's a, that's a four. All right. So this red room here, this is a double red room. So you would add the values of the dice together. And as long as they made six, you would blow up all of the fighters that were on an explosion space. And uh, that would be sweet. Something and good needs to be placed there. You want to re-roll the others anyway. Uh, if we happen to roll low, we've got a place to put it. Uh, if we put it there, we can't build the robot this turn. At least not a very useful one. And we want a two. We want a one and two. The re-rolling, I think, is our first priority. Where do we put a white four? Well, if we moved it in the robots, to the robot space or to the fighter space for the matter that moves the spaceship to an explosion tile too. 
I'm worried we are shooting the spaceships and we are not doing much research. Mm -hmm. So we are not moving far along the, the, the track, really. And we yeah. are helping. Well, four would move us two spaces on the research track. We have three options for research uh, positions. I'm sorry, we have one option for research positions because we don't want to use the one that costs two power. And we've already used column four. Yep. Uh, we could do a controversial thing. We could put a five on the double power plus one green room in the middle. And that would take us two hits, but move us quite far along. It would. Interesting. How, mm -hmm. how safe do we want to play it? Uh, yeah, if we're going to do research at all, we don't really have a good option. We might as well get the most research out of it we can. You're going to go with this controversial move then? I, I think we should do it. You agree, Ray? How about one of the white fours on there rather than the uh, black five? It's also good. Then we can move. Then we could move it to the room with one power because it won't make any difference, right? Mm -hmm. But before we do that, uh, we should think if we want to shoot the spaceships with the double green, the double red room. If we, uh, if we are not, we're going for research. Yeah, because a four here would actually get this ship onto another explosion space. Yes, and then shoot everything out of the sky. Hmm. However, then we need a one in the middle. That's not something we have. No, but you're going to re-roll three dice. We... If you put that there, you're going to get three re-rolls. Yeah. It's, well, whether you, it's whether you want to place one of the black fives first or you want to risk and if you get a one then that would be great are we shooting or are we researching and taking a hit yeah that's the decision isn't it convince me that putting a black five anywhere right now is better than re-rolling it Uh, yeah, so I'm not convincing you, but I think Sebastian saying the five on there would actually move the research marker to here, which is pretty good. Move three ships, five spaces. Uh, it would move three ships, five spaces. Yes, that's the downside. <laughs> now, two of those are going to hit you anyway, unless you do re-roll, get a one, put the one in the column and then... In fact, it's re-rolling and not just getting a one, but if you roll the two, you could put it in the top room. So you actually have quite a good chance. If you put the four in here, you're looking for a one or a two on three dice. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we are shooting, we should put a five in column number two. Then it moves another one to an explosion space, and then we shoot everything out of the sky. Life mm -hmm. is good. But I'm worried that it will just keep coming and we don't seem to be researching enough mm. to win at the end, right? Okay, so that's the, that's the decision. Shoot a lot of stuff this turn or do some research. What do you think, Ray? And we have to shoot. We, we don't have to shoot. <laughs> you don't have to. Remember, your base can take a certain amount of damage and a win is a win. So if you win the game on here, it's still a win. <laughs> Although that mothership is looking terribly close. So what do you think? I, I would go with research. Just move the five in column four to the green space, 
add another five in column three to um, I mean to do the math where it makes sense. That would move us along quite nicely. Uh, I personally think we should go for the re-roll re before we go for anything else. But if we're going to do for go for something else, let's do research. Okay, so we're going to do it. We're going to put the five onto here. So these two ships hit two points of damage on New York. They come back, and this moves also five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And, and then is and can we move the other five to a research space as well? Since we are not shooting, no one is actually on an explosion space anymore. Um. No, that's true. So this one goes this to one there. Could, yes, we we have moved anyway. So yeah, so it just moves another one. Um, why does it move another one? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what world I was in then for a minute. I was <laughs> for some reason. No, well, you're absolutely you. right. I was worried. One more is a very bad idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean that is. Yeah, that is on an explosion space. So, so do we want to reroll now? We could excavate with a five. Actually, this would go all the way to the end. That just, a, just a quick thing. Just thinking, this research here. The six points you're going to get from that one is going to put you at one, three, five, six. You've then only got one left. That's so, true. So that five on there doesn't make sense. He actually, yeah. All right, uh, let's keep it on the red room then. Mm -hmm. We'll do shooting if we figure out where. Be yeah, because yeah, you can put a four here, and that would get this ship onto there. Mm -hmm. I think actually that's that's a pretty good idea. And if we put the white four there, you get to re-roll the other two. You do? Yes. Okay, let's can do that. We, can we excavate first? You can? Um, what do you want to excavate with? Excavate the... five. Oh, we can't excavate all the way to the end. No, because but you could use the five as a four. Uh, we could use five as the four. Oh, and look. That's an explosion space. That is actually, I like it. Nice. Okay, and then we put the white four here, and now we roll this one. And if this is a two or a three, it's a three. And then we get to fix also the first column. Uh huh. You could put the three in the top level, which moves this two. There we go. Okay, we're happy with that. That's pretty good. Uh, I think we are happy. We will have an issue with not having enough power very shortly. Yeah. We'll okay, so this robot generates two points of power and then ticks down to a one. That okay. What order do you want to do these in? I don't think it matters and you do have enough power to do everything. It doesn't matter. Let's, so, let's do okay. it. So one power to excavate to here. Uh, two power... To get six points of research, which is to there, and then one power to blow up that one, that one, yeah. that one, and that one. Nice. Whew. That, oh, you, that was great. We you did needed both that. And shooting. This uh, ended up being great. Yeah. Mothership moves to there, respawning. So the red one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there, and that one goes there. <laughs> Okay, right, next round. Here we go. Okay, so we have two, a two, a two, a five, and a six. And now we have opened up a very nice research plus one for one power yeah spot. but you still haven't opened up the big research room which is what you're going to need to win the game you only have four rounds left so yeah this round 
Next round. Next round. Yeah. If we put a six on this uh, nice plus one power, uh, sorry, plus one research field, that would move one of the invaders to an explosion tile, which might come in handy. Right. And that would move our research up by two notches. Mm -hmm. But I think at this stage, we need to throw everything at research. We have plenty of HP and not enough time to, to win. What do you think, Ray? We need to excavate a bit and uh, get uh, get going at the research. I do the, do the last bit of uh, excavating research to do what we can and try to manipulate the ships into a position where we can blow them up. I don't. That's basically uh, what we can do. Mm hmm. Uh, so, Paul, you need to move the spaceship. I do, if you're happy with that, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, let's try to line up everything else. Uh, so, what do we need? We can put another five somewhere on the research. That would move us uh, all in all four notches, which would be really good. Uh, we've got a two. Oh, we, we could. One onto an exploding explosion space. I, I think we should excavate the black too before we do anything else. So if you do that, that would go there. You happy with that, Rain? Yes. Okay. And then we should put this white five on the only remaining field we actually have. Uh, so that would be green one power in the middle, column three. Okay. Happy with this, Ray? Uh, do we want to use one of the twos first? Uh, we could use it. We are a little bit short on power. If we weren't, I would say we should use it for power. But no, now we're we... going to re-roll anyway. Let's see what we get. Yeah, let's re-roll. I think we will end up in a better place. Okay, anyway. so we put the five there. That means this goes one, two, three, four, boom. And one, two, three, four, five. And then we re-roll. Oh. <laughs> nice. Well... <laughs> We'll see if this is nice. <laughs> wow. Uh, we need to use one of these for power. Yeah. So if, we, so if we put a six in the robot room in column five, that moves us on a shooting space. Mm -hmm. However, we are not shooting this round just yet. No. Uh, which is a bit of a problem. And... How much power do we have? We have one power. We currently have one. one, and you're using three. Uh, you, you, you've got one. You're going to generate one, and you're currently using three. So you're at a net deficit of minus one power. That is not helpful. Yeah, so you're going to need uh, to generate more. The sixes in the double yellow row two. Uh, we can't use double yellow. Can't use this because there's there's dice in yeah. columns three and four. There's one and five. You we can go here. Column one. Yep. It's whether you want to use the white six or the black six for column one. Black six, obviously, because we don't want to re-roll the black six. Right. Let's do that. I think we should uh, we should use the black six okay. in power. So and one, then... two, three, four, five, six. And then where's this going to go? Is to use it for a robot. Uh huh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, you happy with that? We're not trooping this round, but I guess that's yep. the best we can. Okay, right. So let's resolve the rooms. Um, let's get our power first. So you get six power from this, putting you up to seven. And one from the robot. Uh, one from the robot, then the robot is removed. So you're up to eight power. And then we 
can do anything in any order. Um, so we could research next. Yeah, we, so you've got uh, a five point of research here and you've got a seven point of research here. So you want to do the seven points first, obviously. Seven and then five. So that moves you up to there and then to there. That's looking good. Uh, one great. power to excavate. And then two power for a value six robot, which is treated as if it was a seven. Wow. I think we should put this on the last research tile, the big one. That would make it so much easier for us to, to just complete this. You thinking of putting it down here somewhere? Uh, I was thinking column two. Uh, if you put it there, then we have to put another another die in the other space or it's useless. Yes, but you have to just put one there. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, with the right combination of dice, you could win next turn if you had the power. Because this room does use four power. Well, it will, it will pull us back on the research by one. Yeah. So. And so I think we are still a bit away. But hey, we are no longer losing. Yeah. We will also be shooting plenty this round. <laughs> so you're happy with this robot here? Yes. OK, Mothership moves down one. You lose one step of research this respawns now you actually have a choice here uh because columns one two and five the alien spacecraft are equal dis uh, are the same same distance away from the the ship so where's it going to go hmm i think one is good column one yes Okay, right. All right. Let's Let's roll go. some dice. Some high numbers now. Uh, yeah. no. Those are not high numbers. Those those are not high numbers, no. I was listening to you, Ray. My hand wasn't. <laughs> so, uh, uh, an idea. In column five, we have invader and explosion space, right? You do. We yeah. could not move it by placing one in level one. You could Either absolutely one. put that there and it wouldn't move. That would turn it into a zero and mm -hmm. it stay. There's no other shooting space in this column, so I think we should do it. Okay. Mm, what else? What do we do about the research in column one? It would be great to activate it with something like 9 or 12. That robot is a plus 1, right? Uh, the robot is, yeah, so this is actually treated as a 7. Okay, so we need either a 2 or a 5 or 6 for it to make any sense. Oh. So we don't have a 2, 5 or 6, that means we put a white uh, die somewhere. Right, so let's let's figure out where do we read all. Uh, we don't have any power. No, you've only got three power. But we have this very neat uh, column three, level six field, which is plus one, right? It is really nice, but it will move the mothership one space closer towards you. Uh, right, that is not nice. Uh, let's let's figure out the way out of this. Um, ah. <laughs> what kills us the least? <laughs> so we could put it in, in column four, where we have the most, um, you know, safety, most way to go. I was thinking putting the white floor in the uh, right hand side of the power space, double space. That will move that one. Oh no, that is a bad idea. Let's try the white three. Let's let's try the white three then. Wait a minute, I'm counting it wrong. Wait. Yeah, no, the four the four would move it onto the arrow, the three would move it onto the mothership. And the three 
one I don't want. Okay. I don't particularly want to use the arrows before we move. Come on, three. White uh, ship. Oh, this is not good. I've got mostly in my mind is a re-roll and putting two high numbers in that double yellow, but maybe we have to go for the single yellow instead. Yeah, I mean, it depends how much power you're going to need to win. Well, we need four to power the research. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we need to put something high in a single level six room. Maybe we should just let the white invader reach us. I think we need to pick which of them are going to reach us this turn and which are yeah. not. We are losing the game next turn anyway. Yeah. Uh, so we need to do all this research this round and all this research next round. And survive, yeah. And survive. Exciting. So, the right decision to play on difficulty level one? I think absolutely. <laughs> Told you yep. it was a challenge. Oh, it's a neat puzzle game, it's good. Everything I want to do requires a number either one higher or one lower than the dice we have. Yeah, or well, don't forget about these top rooms. I'm I'm now thinking that this one in the in column five was actually a bad idea. We should have just generated power from this one. Well, you can change it. Uh, what do you think, Ray? We can make our our lives oh, a little no, bit easier. Yeah, power is important. Yeah. We need to figure out a way to generate activate the uh, the last level research. Generate all this power for that, and also shoot once, so we don't die. Yeah. And wa all while lining everyone up nicely, so they are where we want them to be. This is not easy. So, I don't see anything useful to do with the black, I'm sorry, with the, the dice we have. And I think we can't afford to put them in the white robe. We have to put a white die somewhere. Hmm. Right, I think we should put a white four in the power room in the row in column three at the very bottom. So we get five power that should power mostly everything we need this round. And it yeah. will get a reroll. We get hit once, uh, which is unfortunate. But I think this one is going to hit us anyway. Okay, you happy with that? Yeah, all right. Okay, so we're going to lock that four in. This is your last chance to use any black dice before we put that on there. I think we are good from my side. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to reroll. Please roll. roll something better this time. We have a one, uh, a three, a four, are. and a six. That six in the uh, in the big research space. That That's would be great help. But the last. Uh, so a six here. Would I'm actually 12. give you fifth. Uh, would give you uh, six, twelve, thirteen, sixteen points of research. Um, which is that? Now you you only need three, eight, yeah. nine. You only need twelve to get to there. But can we get ooh, five? You could win this turn. If we if we got five more, we can win this turn. Yeah. 
Okay, so take the six off and put it. black three. What would that give us there? Uh, a three here would give you a total of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen research, which would move you up the five, the, the five, five, three, eight, nine, would move you to almost the top. So you, you wouldn't be able to win this turn. Oh, unless you were, yeah, unless you generated some other research somewhere else first. Well, if we, let's just play to it. If we put this three in column four in the research room. Yeah. That would give us, that would move us up by one. Then we can put a block four in the second column. That would move, move us up by, to this five. And then we can put a six in the last one. And that moves us all the way up. That does. Getting shot twice doing that. Which and would lose you the game. Yes. So how can we do exactly this, but getting shot only once? <laughs> I don't think we can do that. I don't think we can actually win this round. Oh. So you need to survive this round then. It, it would be sweet if we did that, but I think we switched to survival instead. So I think you're probably best put in, not the three there, but put in the four here. Because you'll get hit once from this, but then this will generate uh, 6, 10, 11, 14 research, which gets you... Yeah, I'm thinking it doesn't trigger the mothership space. But to be honest, if, if you're going to aim to win next round, then mo moving the mothership down one doesn't actually matter. Right. If these spacecraft are your biggest threat, then the fact that the mothership's here rather than here, I, I don't think is going to matter this turn. But yeah. So um, why are we getting fourteen out of this? Uh, six, ten. Oh. But the, the, so this robot is a seven yes. plus four, and there's a plus three on the room. Oh, it's a plus three. It's That's a plus cool. three on the room. Yeah. Very neat. So CGE are watching. They are they are cheering you on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. The brain cells are working at hundred percent now. It's going uh, to be how quiet. much power to get? We get. We you, currently have, you currently have three. You're going to be generating well, another five. So we have eight power. We mm -hmm. will burn four of this for research. We will. We so can we've shoot. Not, once. We've not put that there yet. I think everything else is done. Yeah. No, let, let, let's assume we put it there. We need to put it somewhere. Okay. So that's the damage from that. And then one, two, three, four. Okay, your base cannot take another point of damage. Okay. Yeah, just, just so, about surviving, isn't it? I think minimizing the damage is actually what we should do now. And then how about we use this one uh, the way I originally thought? in column number five or number two for that matter. I think we need to reroll to get lower numbers now. Yeah. But will you get lower than a three? Uh, we could use the three for something. We mm -hmm. could. Research is not giving us anything at all. Three no. would have to go into column four, I think. Uh, what happens if we put it in column five? Blue. Uh, You'll die. All right, unless, so... unless you put it at the top. But then you might die next turn. So I, I was thinking, put it at the top of column four. That is actually a good idea. Trouble is we are not shooting anyway, again. Nope. But it, uh, it slows it down a bit. It, it slows it down. I think yeah. we should... 
we should do that and put one in the last column at the top. Okay, so that stops that moving, and then we re-roll this. Oh, it's another six. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so it has to go in column number two. Yeah. Some. Uh, which doesn't matter because you can't uh, slow it down uh, enough. It, do we die anyway? Where, yeah, where you die anyway. It? Unfortunately, yeah, roll the six at the end. New York has been destroyed. Boom. Yay. There you go. Oh. Sorry, New York. Uh, we didn't save you today. You did not save New York today. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think the uh, biggest problem was the mothership moved too many times in the middle of the game. Because um, what that does is obviously it reduces the number of turns that you have in the game, but more importantly, it reduces the distance for the spacecraft. So the earlier it moves, it means you're then more likely to get hit by spacecraft later on in the game because they're just they're just closer to you. Oh, that was tense. That was wow. tense. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't know much about the game coming into it, but did you enjoy it? Um, I had a good, great time. I think good. It was fun. Good. Stress, stressful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now you can play this game if you're playing this game solo in about uh, 20, 25 minutes. Obviously playing with two players. Oh, there's a lot of noise. Uh, yeah, uh, playing with two players, obviously talking about your moves, I personally think is a better experience, but it does take longer. And obviously playing over the internet. So yeah, this was an hour and a half, but this is normally, I, I would say this is for me, I'd probably play this in about 30 minutes if playing solo. Um, and as mentioned at the start, there's going to be 20 different cities or more, probably more, uh, with all sorts of different base configurations. So even if we were to just flip these over, like that it's a very different game okay so the robots on this particular layout come later on and yeah everything's different and you can also customize the difficulty which we didn't do but you can flip over all of these boards are double-sided and you can flip over as many as you want and each one you flip over is a, is a ramp up in difficulty level so just to give you an idea i can now beat it pretty much every time on difficulty level one Difficulty level two, uh, it's a challenge, but I have beaten it. I can't get past difficulty level three, which is flipping over two boards, uh, which doesn't seem much, but the combination of increased numbers here, increased dangers here, different icons on here. Yeah, the difficulty does, does actually increase quite a lot. So there we go. Uh, thank you very much to you two for joining me today. Have you got any other plans for the weekend? Thanks for having us. Um, That's all right. I think playing playing lots of games. You're going to be playing some games. Excellent. Okay. And what about you, Ray? Have you got anything planned for this weekend? I'm playing Codenames in about a half an hour. Oh, you're playing Codenames with me in half of an hour. Excellent. Right. Okay. Well, that will be on Discord as well. So I will I dis... Go on. question before you came that uh, earlier today, I, I watched a show in the main room about this guy who was teaching people how to teach people how to play games. And I learned a lot about what I was doing wrong. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that was helpful. So I'm more than happy to answer any questions on that. Right. Okay. So I will say goodbye to you two now. I will disconnect the Discord. And Ray, I will see you in about 30 minutes. There we go. So that's that. And yes, I'll be back here. Well, under 30 minutes. I need to pop downstairs, get a bite to eat. Uh, and I'm going to be back here. So on CGE's Twitch channel and on my YouTube, in about 25 minutes time, we're going to be doing a game of code names online. So CG have written a, a web-based version where you can play the game online. That is happening in about 20, 25 minutes time, live on CGE's Twitch and on my YouTube. I will say goodbye for now, and I will see you then. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you later on. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.